In this video, we're going to take a look at the disk method for finding volume. And this will build on the slice method of video number one. So imagine that you want to take this parabola right here, and we want to rotate it around the x-axis. So that means every point on the parabola is going to get rotated around the x-axis. Well, if we jump right to the very end picture here, we can kind of get an idea right here. This is kind of what we're looking at, okay? This is supposed to be a volume, a solid object that has been formed by rotating the parabola around the x-axis. And we create a uh, what is called a solid of revolution. It's a solid, and it was formed by revolving a function, an object, around a particular line or an axis. So how does this involve calculus? How does this involve integration? So if we go back to the original parabola, and let's say, okay, let's take, let's take a look at a rectangle underneath that um, parabola. Now, we're not really interested in finding the uh, area of that rectangle because what we're going to do is we're going to take this rectangle here and we are going to revolve it around the x-axis. So kind of use your imagination. If we took this rectangle and it stays attached to the x-axis, that's the axis of rotation, and we just rotate it around 360 degrees, we're going to have something that looks like this, which is a disk. It's not too clear on the videos, but on the notes uh, that you should be posted in more, this should be a little bit more clear. So what we have is we have a disk. Well, we can find the volume of that disk. The volume of that disk is simply the cross-sectional area times the width of the disk. In other words, it's a slice. Right? So we find the cross-sectional area and we multiply it by the, the thickness. So it's just like what we did in the last video. The only thing is here is the cross-sectional area is always going to be a circle. And we know the area of a circle is pi r squared. All right. So the question is, what is r? Okay. r is basically the function value. So when you think about it, what you're doing is you're, this, this rectangle touches the parabola, and that's, uh, that's going to be the radius. This distance from here to here is the radius. That's the radius. So the function value will give you the distance from the x-axis to the parabola. And so r is simply the function value. So therefore, our formula area is equal to pi times uh, f of x squared. And so, again, you can't see it too well here, but if we take a whole bunch of different rectangles through this whole area, take the, all these different little rectangles, revolve them all around this, you know, axis, we end up with this thing. That's solid of revolution. So we're taking a whole bunch of small rectangles. Each rectangle, the height of that rectangle becomes the radius of the circle or the uh, the disk, and to find the uh, the total volume, we simply add up all of the little um, uh, disks, and so the formula that we have is pretty much the same formula that we had when we were doing slicing. Volume is equal to the integral of a of x, that's the cross sectional area, times dx. With the exception that, which makes it nice, as I've already said, the cross-sectional area, a sub x, is always going to be a circle. So we then end up with this formula down here, pi times f of x squared dx. And that is the formula that we use when using the disk method. All right, so let's do a couple of problems disk method is really quite nice to use. 
So use the disk method to find the volume of the solid of revolution generated by rotating the region between f of x equals the square root of x and the x-axis over the interval from 1 to 4 around the x-axis. All right, so here's the x-axis. Here is my function square root of x. We're, we are finding the volume between 1 and 4, so this becomes the area of rectangles that we want to revolve around the x-axis. Now, it's not very clear, but whenever you see this little thing right there, I'm trying to write the... It's, a, it's supposed to be like a little circle with an arrow on the end of it that says this is where our axis of rotation is. So it doesn't come out too clear, but that is that means that this is the axis of rotation right here. All right, so when I'm doing these problems, I like to determine what are my bounds, first of all. All right, well, the bounds are along the x-axis from 1 to 4. So I always write that out first. Now, what is the radius that I'm going to use in my formula? The radius is all the radius of any rectangle here. The radius of any rectangle again is going to be the function value. All right? So the radius is equal to the function value which is the square root of x. My formula, um, as we wrote it right up here, is pi times the function value squared dx. All right. So we have, I like, like to bring the constants out. So I always bring the pi out in front times the integral from 1 to 4. And then we're taking f of x and squaring it. So that simplifies to this, pi times the integral from 1 to 4 of x dx. Now, what we have to do is uh, find the antiderivative of x, which is x squared over 2, times pi, evaluated from 4 to 1, uh, becomes 15 pi over 2. All right, and that's all there is to using the disk method. Now, it should be noted that you can, of course, um, check these in Desmos, just like I taught you how to do once before. You can take 15 pi over 2, convert it into a decimal number. You can do that on your calculator. You can do it in Desmos. And then you can take your uh, original, take your original um, integral, put that into Desmos, and you should get the same thing, all right? So this is going to always give you a decimal number, and you convert this to a decimal number, and then they should be the same. You can always check your integration problems that way. All right, the next problem. Find the volume of the solid obtained by rotating the region bounded by y equals 2 minus 1 half x, y equals 0, x equals 0, and x equals 1 about the x-axis. I didn't mention it, but of course you can always uh, graph these in Desmos just to get a good idea as to what you're looking at. I went over that in the very first video, so you can continue doing that for any of these problems. Just because I'm not doing it in Desmos now doesn't mean that you shouldn't do it if you feel comfortable. So graph it in Desmos and then create a little bit of a sketch. So again, here's this little thing here is telling me what my axis of rotation is. It's the x-axis. And so here is my function. And so we are going between x equals 0 and x equals 1. So we're creating a whole bunch of little rectangles in here and rotating those x, those re rectangles around the x-axis. So the first thing I like to do is find my bounds. My bounds on the x-axis are from 0 to 1. What is the radius? Well, the radius, again, is the function value which is 2 minus 1 half x. And so again, the radius of the disk is the height of any particular rectangle. All right. And now once you have that, it's just a matter of putting it all together in the integration problem and then integrating properly. So here is your integration problem. Uh, again, I bring the pi out 
integral from 1 to 0. Here's my function value squared times dx. Now, don't forget to square that. So 2 minus 1 half x squared is 4 minus 2x plus 1 fourth x squared. Got to do a little bit of algebra there. And then we're taking the antiderivative of each of those terms. So we end up with this. And evaluating those from 1 to 0, we end up with this. And then simplifying it as much as we can, we end up with 37 pi over 12. So once again, you can convert this into a decimal number. And you can take your original integral, which is this. That's the original integration problem. Put that into decimos, and you're going to get a decimal number. And hopefully it would be the same as that decimal number. But this is what you would most likely have to enter into WebAssign. And I believe we have one more problem for the disk method. So far, what we've been doing is talking about revolving around the x-axis. Well, we can also revolve around the y-axis. And so when we're revolving around the y-axis, what we're doing is we're creating, a, here's my function. And notice that this is function is in terms of y. So this is, a, x is a function of y. And so what we're doing is we are creating rectangles that are sideways. When you're using the disk method and the next method that we use, the washer method, your rectangles must always be perpendicular, always perpendicular to the axis of rotation. It's going to be very important when we get into the next section where they're parallel. Okay, So he, this is my rectangle. And it's perpendicular to the, the length of the rectangle is perpendicular to the axis of rotation. So everything that we're doing is pretty much the same. Oops. Let's go back to red. So we need to figure out what are the bounds on the y-axis now. Well, we're going from y equals 0 to whatever this point is. And of course, that's just the um, y-intercept. Uh, so that's going to be 4. That's easy to figure out. So the bounds of integration are from 0 to 4. The radius, again, is the height of this rectangle. The height of the rectangle is the function. And so r is equal to g of y, which is the square root of 4 minus y. Everything else then is exactly the same, except we're working in terms of y's. So volume is equal to the integral from 4 to 0 of pi times the function value squared times dy. Don't forget to square, but since it's a square root, square root of 4 minus y squared just becomes 4 minus y. That's nice. And so we're integrating that. And so the antiderivative of 4 is 4y. The antiderivative of minus y is minus 1 half y squared. Evaluated from 4 to 0. Plug those in there, and we get a volume of 8 pi. All right, so that's how we rotate or revolve around the y-axis. All right, so you always have to be aware of whether you're rotating it around the x-axis or you're rotating it around the y-axis. If you're rotating around the y-axis, your function is going to be in terms of y, okay? Or you must write the function in terms of y. If you're rotating about the x-axis, the function is going to be a function of x. All right, that's it for this video.